Australia is ending its long-standing arrangement that's seen asylum seekers attempting to get into the country sent to a processing centre in Papua New Guinea. Rights groups in the UN have previously criticised Australia's hardline process, accusing it of housing asylum seekers in substandard conditions offshore where many people suffered abuse. From Sydney, Shaima Khalil explain the next steps. The two countries have decided that starting January 2022, Papua New Guinea, PNG, will be fully responsible for the regional processing services of the remaining uh, asylum seeker uh, in uh, in the country. They will offer them citizenship, they will offer them permanent package, uh, settlement packages and family reunification. If those remaining asylum seekers do not wish to remain in PNG, they, uh, they will either be sent to Nauru Island, which is the other place um, Australia detains people who are trying to reach it by boat, or they could be resettled in uh, a third country. It basically means that Australia and PNG are no longer um, in a deal uh, for Australia to send uh, those asylum seekers to the country. This is, of course, part of the um, very controversial stop the boats policy that started in 2013, uh, a very hardline policy, which meant that anyone fleeing, trying to get to Australia by boat were sent uh, to a detention center uh, on PNG's Manus Island. It was criticized by human rights activists, by the UN, by the United States um, for, it is, for its harsh conditions and also uh, for the mental health effects that it's had on uh, on people. Now, this detention center on, Man on Manus Island has been closed down and almost emptied, really, uh, of the many people that were there. All of them, mo almost all of them have gone. About 124 asylum seekers um, remain, and these are the ones that are now going to be processed uh, by PNG. Nauru Island, um, that still remains um, another place, but all in all, I think it's the beginning of a, a change, if you will, uh, and Australia uh, the Australian government giving up one of those uh, regional processing at centre in this really controversial uh, policy. Let's take you live now to Hobart in Tasmania in Australia. I'm joined by Nick McKim, Australian Green Senator and the party spokesperson on issues of immigration. Nick, I know you've been to these detention centres in Papua New Guinea. You've seen what happens there. You must then welcome this decision today. Well, we do welcome it. It is a small step in the right direction. But remember, as your intro correctly pointed out, that there are two countries that Australia has engaged to um, in regards to offshore detention and offshore processing, and the uh, system and the frameworks on Nauru uh, still remain. So uh, we, we welcome a small step forward. We'd like to see it go further, but there are still many hundreds of people caught up in what is a brutal and inhumane system. So, Nick, is there a long-term plan then for the government to wind down Nauru? Well, no, they've uh, unfortunately um, just uh, re-extended some of the contracts they have with private sector companies uh, on Nauru. So it doesn't look as if they will uh, end offshore detention anytime soon, which is you know, a tragedy um, for the people involved, obviously, but also for Australia's international reputation and uh, also for other countries around the world, including the UK, who seem to be uh, copying our policies of, uh, of brutality and inhumanity. Nick, what did you see when you went to Papua New Guinea? What sort of treatment did these people suffer? <laughs> Look, they were kept in conditions that were completely unacceptable. Remember, these are innocent people. They committed no crime. And um, their only mistake really was reaching out a hand to Australia and asking for assistance and for protection and for asylum. And for that, um, they were exiled forcibly um, to either Nauru in the case of women and children and family groups or to Manus Island in the case of single men. And they were detained there in horrendous conditions for uh, up to eight years now. And uh, on one of my trips, I witnessed a situation where the Australian and Papua New Guinean governments colluded to cut off the food, the drinking water, uh, the electricity uh, and the medical support from about 650 people in the Lombram prison. And they, they, those conditions where they were basically digging water, uh, digging holes to try and find fresh water to drink, the PNG police were going into that centre and overturning the rubbish bins that they'd collected rainwater in. Um, you know, it just beggars belief the brutality and the, the inhumanity of that system. 
There are many in Australia who do support it though, Nick, including the government. Is there evidence to prove that the treatment of these people did act as a deterrent to others? Well, interestingly, the government will claim that it stopped the boats, but that's uh, just a big fat political lie, really. It didn't stop the boats. There are still people who are desperate enough to, uh, to entertain a dangerous sea voyage, and we are still turning boats back at sea as recently as this year. And, of course, what it's done is it's changed the mode of arrival, and people are now in record numbers arriving by plane to seek asylum in Australia. So it's a policy failure, but it's come at the expense of this um, this brutal dehumanising regime. But it's also poisoned our politics in Australia and massively damaged what previously was a very good international reputation for human rights. Nick McKim, thank you for joining us from Hobart.